So I want to talk this evening for a few minutes about looking back, about reflecting on things that have happened in the past. My original thought for this lesson was to call it Don't Look Back. I had seen a quotation from Henry David Thoreau. <clears throat> he said, don't look back unless you're planning to go there. So, but then as I was working on the lesson and getting it ready, I realized that looking back at the past is not always a bad thing. It has good si a good side to it and a bad side to it sometimes. So there's another quotation perhaps you've heard. Uh, it is that those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. There's some truth in that as well. So tonight I want to look at three different scenarios when we might look back at the past. Look at the good side of that, the bad side. Look at some Bible examples of people who, who did those things, who looked back. And, and then, of course, look at some applications for us. What, what kind of things can we learn from looking to the past? So the first aspect of, of looking at the past, looking back to the past, is recalling good things from the past. Recalling good things. Taking time to dwell on the past, on things that we remember in a, with, with, in a positive way. And again, as I said, this can have a good side to it and a bad side. If we look at the good side, um, we think about uh, looking at the past as we get together with family and friends and we reminisce about things from the past. Maybe we think about pleasant things from our childhood. Uh, those of us who have older children, we think back to the, to the childhood of, of our children and pleasant things that we did together. And, um, and, um, and we might, somewhat, somewhat negative, but we, we think about loved ones who have gone on before us. Uh, and that could be a positive thing. We think about uh, um, what wonderful people they were, the good example they were to others, the love that they had for us. And, and that can be a good way of looking at the past and remembering those people. Those things are blessings from God. It's good for us to look back and look at blessings from God and remember uh, what he's done for us. Another way of looking at the past is... You know, um, remembering the way things were done in the past so that we don't have to repeat the wheel every time we want to do something. Uh, we can look at the way things were done in the past and say, oh, that, that worked out pretty well. I'll do it that way again. Turning to the spiritual side, we look to the past every week when we take the Lord's Supper. And of course, that has a painful aspect to it, thinking of Christ on the cross, but it's also a a wonderful thing to think of what Jesus did for us. So every week we look to the past and we reflect on what Jesus did for us. And of course, we often look at the Old Testament. We look at people and the thing and the events that happened in the Old Testament, and we learn from that. These are examples for us. So that's a time when we need to look to the past. It's good for us to look back at those things and remember them. It's good for us to remember. God's blessings, the good things that God has done for us in our lives. Psalm 77. Psalm 77 in verses 11 and 12. We read there, I shall remember the deeds of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. I will meditate on all your work and muse on your deeds. So that's definitely a time when we need to look to the past on something that's good for us to remember, the blessings of God. But there can be a negative aspect to looking to the past. Looking to the past, if we, if we overdo it, if we dwell on the past too much, it can distract us from things that we need to be doing now, the needs of the present, tasks that we need to be doing. Um, we need to remember the blessings that God is giving to us now and not spend too much time reflecting on the past. A number of Bible examples, I'm sure one that probably came to your mind when we said looking, when I said looking back, was Lot's wife. In Genesis chapter 19, as the angels were leading Lot and his wife and his two daughters 
out of Sodom and Gomorrah. They don't look back. Don't look back. And of course, we find out that Lot's wife did look back. Not sure why she looked back. We're not told whether she was just looking back to see the, all the excitement or if she was missing something that she had back in Sodom and Gomorrah. Maybe friends that she had, pleasures that she enjoyed there. But she looked back and she suffered the consequences of looking back. And of course, we often look at the example of Israel as they were wandering in the wilderness um, and how they, on numerous, several occasions, looked back to Egypt. In Numbers chapter 11, Numbers chapter 11 and verses 5 and 6, we read a, um, a passage that tells about the things that they were saying as they looked back at Egypt. Numbers chapter 11 and verses 5 and 6 says there, We remember the fish which we used to eat free in Egypt, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. But now our appetite is gone. There is nothing at all to look at except this manna. So they were looking back to Egypt. They forgot that they had been delivered by God from slavery. They forgot the Egyptians were killing their children. They seemed to forget that. And they wanted to go back to Egypt, back into that. So, a bad example of looking to the past. And in Galatians chapter 4, in, in the book of Galatians, Paul, in uh, several places, is rebuking the Galatians for, uh, for wanting to return to where they had been. In Galatians chapter 4, Galatians chapter 4 in verses 8 and 9, Galatians chapter 4, beginning in verse 8. However, at that time when you did not know God, you were slaves to those which by nature are no gods. But now that you have come to know God, or rather to be known by God, how is it that you turn back again to the weak and worthless elemental things to which you desire to be enslaved all over again? So they were looking back to the pleasures of the sinful life they had led before they came to Christ. A bad way of looking back, and one that we need to be aware of. So what can we learn from this? What applications can we take from this, from looking back? So life can be hard at times. I think all of us have seen hard times in our lives. Illness, um, all of the things that can happen in life that are unfortunate, that bring us pain, And if we dwell too much on, on the things that are going wrong in our lives now, we might look to the past and think, oh, it was so much better back then. Wish I could go back to the way it was. It takes our eye off the goal. It takes our mind off the blessings that God is giving us right now. And it keeps us from going forward. So we need to be careful when we look at the past and not... Look at it with too rosy a picture and remember the present and what we need to be doing, keeping our eyes on the goal. And it's especially bad if we're like the Galatians, looking back at our sinful past before we came to Christ, the things that we enjoyed doing then. It's especially bad if we look back and think of those things and want to go back to those things. So it's okay to, the, to remember the past, but we need to be careful that we don't look at it too much and let it distract us from what we need to be doing now and the blessings that God is giving us now. So another way that we can look to the past, you've probably heard the saying of resting on our laurels. A laurel was... Um, a, a wreath that was placed on the head of Roman and Greek athletes when they would win a contest. It's a way of, of giving them honor. And we have used that today to think anything that is a laurel is a, some honor that we have received. Um, so resting on our laurels, looking at some honor or achievement or some accomplish, good accomplishment in the past and, uh, and taking pleasure in it. So what might that look like if if we engaged in that too much, we might say, 
Look at all the good things that I've done. Surely I've accumulated enough points to get into heaven. I'm just going to take it easy now. I've done enough. I'm just going to coast from here on out. That's a bad way of looking at the past, of resting on our laurels. Something we need to be careful of. Some examples. Um, I was thinking of uh, the church at Sardis in Revelation chapter 3 and verses 1 through, t- through 3. They had a reputation that they were alive, but Jesus said they're dead. So that tells me that if they had a good reputation, it pro- they probably gained that reputation by being zealous in the past, by doing good works in the kingdom. And so he had gained a good reputation, but it seems like they had probably become complacent, self-satisfied. And they had lost that, as the church at Ephesus lost their first love. They were looking back at the past, resting on their laurels, and not moving forward. And then another example, a good example, would be Paul. Paul, several times through his letters, looked back at his past. In Acts chapter 23, when he was before the Sanhedrin Council, Uh, he made the statement that he had always lived with a good conscience before God, even when he was sinning, going against the way, going, fighting against Christ. He had a good (laughs) conscience. So he could brag about that if he wanted to. In Philippians chapter 3, verses 4 through 6, he lists many of the advantages that he had as a Jew, far and above his contemporaries. On top of that, after he was converted and came to Christ, he could look back on all that he had done for Christ, all of the people that he had converted, the churches that he had established, uh, the persecutions that he had suffered. So Paul, more than anyone, could look back to his past and he could say, wow, look what a great person I am. Look at all the great things I've done. Instead, in Philippians chapter 3, we see what Paul's attitude was. <clears throat> Philippians chapter 3, and beginning in verse 12, this was the attitude that Paul had. Philippians chapter 3, beginning in verse 12, Paul said, Not that I have already obtained it, or have already become perfect, But I press on so that I may lay hold of that for which also I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So despite all of the advantages and good things that Paul had in the past, he wasn't dwelling on the past. He wasn't resting on his laurels. He was pressing forward. And that's what we need to do. We need to remember, keep our eyes on the goal. And thinking of us, uh, just thinking of, of this congregation, there are many good things about this church. We're faithful to the word, I think. We are welcoming, generous, We're caring. We look after each other. When someone has a need, we're there to take care of it. Uh, We have a good reputation. We hear about it from time to time. People are saying they've they've heard good things about this congregation. And it's encouraging to see the ways that we're looking to move forward, to do better in in so many different areas, in spreading the gospel. But we always need to beware of becoming complacent, of resting on our laurels, always keeping our eyes on the goal and thinking of those words of Paul, pressing forward, not dwelling so much on the past. So one final way of looking back, and I think in some ways this can be one of the most damaging things for many people, and that is dwelling on the negative things in our past. And again, this has a good side and a bad side. Um, So thinking about our sins, thinking about our failures, thinking about losses that we've suffered, uh, perhaps something we said or did that was harmful to someone, uh, perhaps some sin that we committed. Um, 
perhaps some relationship that was damaged because of something that we said or did, something maybe that we failed to do. And then perhaps it's things, harmful things that other people did to us. I think some of us could relate some pretty horrific things that other people have done to us that could damage our lives. And then, of course, there are just the hardships of life that we all suffer just from being alive. So those kind of things. And on the good side, it is good for us to dwell on the past to some degree. In uh, Deuteronomy chapter 9 and verse 7, Deuteronomy chapter 9 and verse 7, Israel was reminded not to forget their past. Chapter 9 and verse 7, Deuteronomy. Remember, do not forget how you provoke the Lord your God to wrath in the wilderness from the day that you left the land of Egypt until you arrived at this place. You have been rebellious against the Lord. And he goes on with a list of, of how they sinned against God. So don't forget. Don't forget what you did. Uh, not, not to just wallow in it or feel guilty about it all the time, but just remember, it's not because you're so holy. It's because of the mercy and grace of God that you are where you are today. In Ephesians chapter 2, Paul reminds us about remembering. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1, And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the price, prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them we too all formerly lived in the lusts of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh of the, and of the mind, who were nature by, children, by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. But God, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So he's telling, reminding them of their sinful nature before they came to Christ. It was good for them to remember that so that they would not forget the grace that God had shown them in saving them from those things. So that's a good way that we can look to the negative things in our past. On the bad side, it can be very harmful when we dwell on these things too much, when we allow them to discourage us. Um, allow them to make us feel like we're worthless, like we're not worthy of God's love and grace. An example from the past again, uh, Joseph. In uh, Genesis chapter 45, some were familiar with the story of Joseph, Joseph and all of the horrible things that he suffered, what his brothers did to him, slavery, prison, all of these negative things that he could have dwelt on and, and allowed to, to make him bitter and angry. But we see his words to his brothers when he revealed himself to them in Genesis chapter 45 and verses 4 and 5. Then Joseph said to his brothers, please come closer to me. And they came closer and he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. Now do not be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. So Joseph, again, could have become angry and bitter and taken revenge on his brothers, but he didn't let the negative things in his past do that to him. Another example, I look to Paul again um, in 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 9. Paul never forgot his negative past, what he had done before he came to Christ. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 9. Paul said, For I am the least of the apostles and not fit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. And in Acts 26, 
Acts chapter 26, beginning in verse 9. It says again, Six, beginning, 26, beginning in verse 9. So then I thought to myself that I had to do many things hostile to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And this is just what I did in Jerusalem. Not only did I lock up many of the saints in prisons, having received authority from the chief priests, but also when they were being put to death, I cast my vote against them, and I punished them as often in all the synagogues. I tried to force them to blaspheme. And being furiously enraged at them, I kept pursuing them, even to foreign cities. So the point is, Paul did not forget the negative things that he had done in the past. Um, and it strikes me that as Paul was going around preaching the gospel, I'm sure that very often he ran in to people who had left Jerusalem because of his persecution. People he had persecuted, maybe he had killed members of their families. And so he was constantly reminded of what he had done. And yet he did not allow that to drag him down to hold him back. To, he did not wallow in guilt. But as we saw in Philippians chapter 3, his attitude was, I'm going to move forward. I'm not going to dwell on the past. I'm going to keep my eye on the goal. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 10, verse 10 he, re, he was reminded of the grace of God which brought him out of that negative past. And then one other, kind of a dual example, uh, the example of Peter and Judas, when Jesus was being tried and crucified. Judas, looking on his immediate past and what he had done, allowed it to, allowed it to destroy him. Allowed, brought him to, when he felt the guilt of what he had done to Christ, he killed himself. But Peter had denied Christ three times. But he did not allow that to hold him back. Once Jesus was resurrected, he went on to become one of the foremost preachers of the gospel. So a negative example and a positive example of men who did not let the negative things in their past destroy them. So that brings us to us again. Again, Philippians, Ephesians chapter 2, we saw where Paul reminded them not to forget where they had come from the sinful life they had before their previous condition, but to remember the grace of God. Don't forget what God has done for you, the sacrifice of Jesus. So we remember our sins, but we can't dwell on them. We can't allow them to cause us to be overwhelmed with guilt. And when we think of things that people have done to us, we can't allow that to destroy us. We need to remember the grace of God, that in God's eyes, we are worthy of his mercy, worthy of giving his son to die for us. Our God is a God of mercy. Let me just read a few passages that talk about God's mercy. In Exodus chapter 34, where God reveals himself to Moses, Exodus chapter 34 and verse 6 then the Lord passed by in front of him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness and truth. God is a God of love and compassion. He is a just God, and he will not allow sin to go unpunished. But if we, if we confess our sins and repent, he loves to show mercy to us and grace. In Ezekiel chapter 18, Ezekiel chapter 18, Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 32, Ezekiel says there was God speaking, for I have no pleasure in the death of anyone who dies, declares the Lord God, therefore repent and live. God does not, he is a just God again, he does not let sin go unpunished, but he does not enjoy having to punish us when we sin. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 16 and 17. Hebrews chapter 10, beginning in verse 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. 
I will put my laws upon their heart, and on their mind I will write them. He then says, And their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. I will remember their sins no more. If we come to him, confess our sins, he loves to forgive us. God is love. Many other passages we look, look at talking about God's mercy and love for us. So that when we look at our past and we think about things that we have done, things that people have done to us, remember God's grace. Remember God's mercy. Remember that in his eyes, we are worth the life of his son. So we don't need to be overwhelmed with guilt. So our sins and our failures sometimes come back to haunt us. If we let them, they can drag us down, they can distract us, they can make us take our eyes off the goal and forget the hope that God has placed before us. But we need to remember the words of Paul. Philippians chapter 4, one of my favorite passages. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute. If there's any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. Instead of dwelling on the failures and hardships of our past, dwell on the good things that God has provided for us. So that's my lesson for this evening. I hope that it have, has provided some insight, some value to you. So if you have not come to Christ, if you have come to realize the sin that you carry, he is waiting with grace and mercy to take those sins away so that you don't need to be burdened by those sins any longer. You don't need to carry that guilt anymore. He is a loving God. He will be merciful. If we do what he has commanded us to do, believe that Jesus is his son, to repent of our sins, to confess our faith, to be baptized, have our sins washed away, and begin to live a life of grace before our God and our Savior. Whatever your situation, would you please come forward while we stand and sing? <laughs>